actually the 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 long-standing element of fear in, in American society, I think, has different origins. Uh, and you can see it when you ask, what are people afraid of? Uh, actually, there's quite a good study of this in literature, popular literature, by uh, Bruce Frank Franklin, uh, who studies uh, a, liter a literary scholar at uh, Rutgers called the uh, War Stars. He, he runs through the striking theme of fear in popular American literature since colonial times. And it turns out that pretty consistently uh, people have been terrified of some group that they are destroying. So in the early days, it was fear of the savage Indians. You know. Later, it was fear of the blacks. Uh, then it was uh, fear of the heathen Chinese who were going to conquer us. This is the late 19th century. Uh, and, uh, and so it continues. I mean, take, say, Ronald Reagan. Perhaps recall just 20 years ago, he was... Uh, cowering in his uh, cowboy boots about the threat of uh, the Nicaraguan army uh, only two days from Harlingen, Texas, had to call a national emergency, uh, informed the press that he remembers uh, Winston Churchill and how Churchill stood up for Hitler, and despite the odds against him, he, Reagan, will uh, not... Uh, be def you know, will not succumb to this awesome threat and we'll defend them ourselves and we'll defend ourselves. I mean, looking at this from the outside, you don't know whether to laugh or cry, laugh or cry you know, but yeah, that, that uh, strikes a chord. Regarding terrorism from the point of view of religious fundamentalism, there have been writers who have been dubbed the new atheists, like Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins, who feel that groups like the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda are not acting on economic or even political motivations so much as they're acting on their conviction of how humans ought to act and think based on the Koran. Others would argue that the political motivations are what's driving the issues in the Middle East and not religious motivations. On this issue of religion as the chicken or the egg, what are your thoughts? Depends who you're talking about. I mean, uh, the, the, first of all, Muslim Brothers is not a, is not essentially a terrorist group. It's a social and political group. I mean, it's been involved in terrorism, but who hasn't? Uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, the uh, uh, if, if you look at the appeal of groups like, uh, say, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and its offshoots, like Hamas in uh, Israel, which is kind of offshoot of it, uh, or, uh, or Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon, they have a trans amount of popular appeal. But it's, it would be very misleading to say that it's religious, that there's an element of that. I mean, they prov provide uh, social services and uh, that the government doesn't make available. Uh, they, they're they a kind of a populist uh, social and economic group. That's where their support comes from. It sounds. I'm sorry to uh, interject. I just wanted to get your opinion on this. It sounds like what you're saying is because there are no secular nationalist alternatives, these groups are filling a vacuum that secular nationalist governments would fill. Is that a fair That's point? That's not only fair, but it's been concerted U.S. policy and concerted Israeli policy. Secular nationalism has been regarded by an, as an extreme threat. Uh, it, it's, and it finally collapsed, partly from its own internal corruption and so on, but partly just from the hammer blows against it. Uh, I'm going to take U.S. policy. Uh, Hamas, for example, well, it, its earlier manifestations in called themselves Hamas then, uh, were supported by Israel as a weapon against uh, secular Palestinian nationalism. Uh, the United States... Uh, our oldest and most valued ally in the Middle East is the most extreme fundamentalist tyranny in the world, you know, Saudi Arabia. By comparison, Iran looks like a modern, uh, developed society. Uh, and uh, the reason is, of course, you know, it's where the oil is, but uh, the U.S. was constantly backing, uh, uh, it, say, in the 60s, uh, uh, supporting Saudi Arabia against secular nationalism represented by uh, Nasser, who was regarded as the main threat. He was you know, Hitler, as uh, Dulles called him, huh. Hitler. Yeah, secular nationalism has always been regarded as a major threat. You don't want that. It's, it's dangerous. Uh, might have appeal. Might even begin to use resources for the population, the general population. That's a danger. And, very, you know, not 100%, but quite sy sy systematically, a U.S. policy and in their own region, Israeli oh. policy, uh, has tended to support religious fundamentalism as a weapon against secular nationalism. I mean, perhaps the most dramatic case is Pakistan, dangerous countries in the world, uh, 
with a strong element of religious extremism. Well, that was sponsored by Ronald Reagan. You know, in fact, uh, Reagan, there was a brutal dictator at the time, Reagan years, uh, Zeal Huck, who worked really hard to eliminate the secular elements in the society, brought in uh, Saudi Arabian money, poured in to uh, build the madrasas, you know, the religious schools, which became terrorist training schools, a lot of them. Uh, Reagan even went to the extent of... Uh, denying that uh, Pakistan was developing nuclear weapons, although the U.S. government, of course, knew, he w knew they were. And, you know, then we end up with, uh, you know, the con networks have been distributing uh, the, the nuclear weapons and missiles around the world. Uh, yeah, it was uh, strongly sponsored by the United States. When I say Reagan, I don't mean to imply that he actually knew about it. He may not have known anything about it. Uh, but his administration certainly did. Do you think overall, I'm, I'm going to ask, this might seem a little naive, but I'd like to get your opinion on this. Do you think religion overall is the main cause for conflict and suffering over the last thousand years in the sense of creating the conditions that we have in the 21st century? Or do you think that's a little bit simplistic? I think it's not a little bit, but enormously simplistic. I mean, just take the current period right now. Uh, uh, some of the worst, maybe the worst atrocities going on in the world in the last few years are in the eastern Congo, where estimates are maybe four million people killed. I don't think religion had anything significant to do about it. Uh, right now, the, uh, uh, the U.S. invaded Iraq, of course. Hundreds of thousands of people killed, uh, society devastated, you know, millions fleeing uh, uh, may move on to uh, conceivable. It might move on to attack Iran. There's no religion involved. In fact, the U.S. attacked a secular a tyranny in Iraq. And you've been listening to part one of a discussion on humanism with Professor Noam Chomsky. Part two of our discussion will air next week at 6.30 p.m.